You're listening to the Youth Creek Podcast on KHZ Network. Find us on Facebook at Decibel UNG Radio and find us on Twitter at Decibel UNG. If you like this episode, please leave a like and comment on our iTunes page at KHZ Network. So there I was. And now for the podcast. With a heavy case of amnesia in the middle of nowhere, the only clue to my past is Harry's name and address inside this hat. So I made my way to the apartment, and that's when I found you. And your stapler gun. Stop talking! You're a hallucination! You're a hallucination. So you're a talking Pikachu with no memories who's addicted to caffeine. I can stop whenever I want. These are just choices. Another round, extra shot. Black as night, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Harry got in too deep. Mixed up with the wrong crowd, that kind of thing. Look, you can talk to humans. I can talk to Pokemon. And if you want to find your pops, we're going to need each other. No, I don't need a Pokemon. What about a world-class detective? Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Youth Critic Podcast. I am your host, Kale Smith. Joining me this week is Gina Versa. Hey, how are you doing? Good to be back. And this week, we are talking about the highly anticipated movie, if you were a kid from the 90s, the one and only Detective Pikachu. I was a kid from the 90s, so I was uh, pretty jazzed to see this. Yeah. So, yeah. So, just to kind of get into it real quick, uh, Gene, what is your history with Pokemon? With Pokemon, I was hooked on probably the game first. I want to say that that was my introduction to it, and then the TV show. Probably the game was maybe just a little bit, like uh, a little bit sooner than the like maybe a couple of days, a couple of uh, weeks or so before. But the um, I was hooked on the game. I loved catching Pokemon and just like fighting. It was a uh, uh, really um, innovative uh, game at the time, I guess, when you were a kid. Um, you really felt like you were in that world catching Pokemon. And the uh, cartoon was fun, you know, it was uh, really imaginative, um, really wanted to, uh, really wanted to be, uh, maybe you really want to be a Pokemon trainer, you know, because they were 10 and then you were 10, but probably your parents wouldn't want you to go out into the wild, <laughs> like the actual Pokemon parents that just let kids just run and catch wild animals, but. No, I mean, I was always a big fan. Um, you know, I grew out of it. Um, kind of, you know, looked in on some of the games after my time, you know, just to uh, just to see what they had to offer. And, yeah, the Detective Pikachu game seemed like it was uh, pretty cool. And my friends were phoned about it. And, yeah, I think I haven't played it, but I um, was really curious to see to look into it so yeah um big pokemon fan i would say growing up so for me my kind of history with pokemon is um i had cousins that i would hang out with and we would play the pokemon trading cards as well as the game uh because i think the game was also available on game boy is that correct it was on game boy yeah this is on game boy well it was on the first Game Boy, Pokemon Red and Blue, and then there was Pokemon Yellow, which was on Game Boy Color. So that was kind of a that was kind of a big thing at the time. Okay. Um, so yeah, we would, and then I would watch the show periodically. But the problem was, I had, for whatever reason, Pokemon kind of just became a controversy. Mm -hmm. um, like many things in the nineties. Yeah, that really in hindsight shouldn't have been yeah. um because the, the way because it, it was a controversy to my parents and my parents didn't want me to play it uh i even went to a private school that banned pokemon like merchandise oh so um, like all the cards they would just like cards lunch boxes any like it was that and powerpuff girls as well why that's a weird powerpuff girls I mean, like, uh, the contraband was, you know, Pokemon. 
it's, I'm assuming kids would get distracted, but like Powerpuff Girls too. I guess I don't know that, but those were the two things when I went. I went to like a private school for like uh, for kindergarten, and that okay. was like one of that in Power Pokemon and Powerpuff Girls, where the thing listed saying do not bring to school in any like any merchandise any it could even just be a black book bag that just has pokemon on it just don't bring it um so yeah it was a weird it was kind of a weird thing so that's kind of why i don't really have that big of a relationship with pokemon but i but i'm very aware of it i'm very much you know, in, in, and I really do like kind of the the genius behind the marketing behind it. I mean, it's very much like, you know, it's very much the same way as uh, tr- the first Transformers TV show, the He-Man. It's basic. Pokemon is basically what that was for the for 80s kids. That's what that was for us, the 90s kids. Pokemon was that show where they, it was a show that was basically meant to sell video games and toys and trading cards but the appeal to um uh, pokemon was it was very kid centric it was very much like these kids these kids that 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 are like 10 years old to like 15 year olds they're going on this epic quest to you know become the best mm-hmm. become the best you know pokemon trainer the, the you know and that's really the story of the show and it is, and it's an episodic show where you get to watch it every Saturday morning, and it worked very well. It worked very, you know, well on kids. And it's a very simple enough premise to where kids can watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, all the character, all the characters that can't talk, like Pikachu, uh, their emotions are very well telegraphed through the anima- for through the animation. It's it's a very well designed show, specifically for kids. And yeah. and it's so fascinating that now it has has it's got to come back for uh, in 2016 with Pokemon Go, um, and it, it it's just fast it's fascinating that it kind of came back and became even more popular because now people could actually on their phones catch Pokemon. Yeah, you could also Pokemon Go to the polls. But I'm trying to figure out how we get them to have Pokemon go to the polls. <laughs> God. Mm, not to get now. I don't want to go into that. I don't mm. want to open that Pandora box. Yeah, let's, let's probably not do that. Uh, it'll take, well, it'll just take too long. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so for me, I love kind of what it was. Mm-hmm. Um so now going into this movie, um, Gene, what did you think of Detective Pikachu Pokemon or Pokemon Detective Pikachu? Oh, so the movie itself, I really enjoyed. I thought it was a nice, um, it's kid movie, a little adult at times, that really had some really cool themes about um, just uh fathers looking for you know fathers and sons and uh it really i really appreciated how accurate the designs were to the original pokemon especially after seeing that uh just everything going on with uh the sonic the hedgehog movie which is just uh just insane well but, it's, it's insane yeah. now because they're going back in and redoing it yeah yeah, that's uh, poor. Those poor visual effects, people. Gosh, can you imagine? And it already, it's not even that the character doesn't even look right. Which I honestly, that's the best we're gonna get with the character design. I think. I mean, it's a blue, it's a blue hedgehog mm-hmm. that talks. Yes. People get, it's not like we're watching Scooby Doo here. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Like it's not too hard to get. Get what are you expecting? <laughs> um, yeah, 
yeah, I feel so bad for those poor visual effects people. I hope if they are changing it, they do move because it, it cause it only because it's only fair. Like there, it's and also we ha- people have to kind of realize it not only takes time to redo designs or redo shots, but more teams are going to have to be hired and already like the best visual effects people or even like decent visual effects, like computer artists, people are already like working hard on other films. Uh So, I mean, it would be like a Herculean task to meet the November release date. If they're redesigning it and redoing it all. I mean, it would just be this Herculean task. Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, Pokemon. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. Every every Pokemon looked like their original design. Mewtwo, Pikachu, and the stuff they added to the design, I really agreed with. Like making Pikachu so fuzzy. It's like yeah, he's kind of a rodent, mouse-like Pokemon. So yeah, it would it would make sense for him to have fur like that. So just the yeah. whole world was so well done, and I felt it was very immersive. Where it's like you really felt like you lived in that world of all these creatures just inhabiting it, like small little touches. Like um, there's a there's a there's a Snorlax that like blocks a street, like how Snorlaxes blocks roads in the original game. Mm. All the little like touches and nods they did to the property really showed how much they appreciated it. And, you know, I would say they, they uh, seemed like they were big fans of it and really honored the source material. Um, that director, is it Rob Marshall? No, uh, Rob Letterman. Rob Letterman, excuse me. Uh, any... Marshall's the uh, Mary Poppins oh, uh, that's right. guy. Okay. My mistake. But, uh, you know, he's kind of, uh, you know, it seems like he's a pretty decent director. I mean... For every good movie he does, he does like um, he's kind of fifty fifty monsters versus aliens. Then he does Shark Tale, excuse me, Shark Tale and Monsters vs. Aliens. Then he did the Goosebumps movie, which was pretty good. So yeah, it's kind of a mixed bag. Where you're going to go with him? But I thought he did a pretty pretty good job. And, and I'll uh, s- mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, and I love. Uh, I love um, Ryan Reynolds as uh, Detective Pikachu, even though I kind of did. I kind of wanted Danny DeVito. Um, Would have been cool, you know. Swear yeah, I mean, it makes sense why they went with someone younger when mm. you know the ending of the movie. But right, yeah. Um, but yeah, you. It, but yeah, it it makes sense why they didn't go with DeVito, but it would have been a good cat. It would have been a good casting call, but it probably would have been the obvious one. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. My pick would have been like Billy Eichner. Would have been who? Billy Eichner. Uh, so, um, blink in here. Uh, Billy on the streets. Um. Oh, from like Funny or Die. Yeah, or yeah, that and also he does Friends from College, um, and Difficult People, and he's Timon oh. in The Lion King. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, so, that'd, be, uh, that'd be something. Yeah, because I I don't know. There's just something about like that manic energy that Eichner has that I think would have worked in it with an animated Pikachu performance. Cause yeah, I could definitely see that. Cause the issue that I have, cause I like Ryan Reynolds quite a bit in as Pikachu. The problem is, it's like PG Deadpool. Yeah, it's definitely that at times. It feels you feel that as well. Surprised he got like uh, what does he say? Like get me the hell out of here. You got that. <laughs> Yeah, it that's my big thing is it, it Reynolds doesn't really do enough to differentiate like the characters of Deadpool. Like oh. or between Deadpool and Pikachu, like the only difference to me in those characters 
are and it's not even like their voices it's you know it's even like how they compose themselves how they talk it's also also pikachu's very self-referential at times um it, it, it's it's very much deadpool but pg or Ooh. d-rated because yeah it and i think that's kind of my only issue with his performance is that i wish Reynolds would have done more differently, like played with the character even more, you know, because, you know, actors, they love to play different kinds of characters and they like, to, they don't, you know, and, and, and also we benefit from them playing different kinds of characters. Yeah, of course. So I think it would have just been better, but the thing is, but I say this and then I really love how they use Ryan Reynolds at the very end of the movie. Yeah, I uh, I thought that was great too. I, I really did not expect that. Yeah, just the little subtle acting Reynolds does at the very end of the movie. I mean, that's almost that almost won me over on the movie. Uh-huh. Because I guess if we're just going into spoiler, I guess if we go into spoilers. Um. So, spoiler warning. I because I ha- I want to talk about this because this is my favorite scene in the whole movie. Um, but the reason why I love the ending. Okay, so to give, I'm jumping around a bit. So to give yeah, context, the spoilers. <laughs> yeah, we're jumping around a bit. So to give context, so uh, me too. When the accident happened, so there's an accident that causes that basically causes the whole plot of the movie. It's the catalyst of the film where um, me too. Uh, apparent fr- at the beginning of the movie, it's Oh, sorry. Crap. It's, it's a uh, me too. Me too. Yeah. As in like a Mew and then a two. Yeah. Okay. Mew two um, crashes a car and we think, and we believe that his father is dead. However, Mew two put, uh the consciousness of his father of uh tim's father into pikachu and that's how he can talk and so at the end mewtwo reverses that and brings his tim's father back as ryan reynolds Mm -hmm. and at the end of the movie you think that tim who has gone on this you know journey of being the reluctant hero um being the one who didn't want to be have any involvement with pokemon because of his you know past and because of his father uh becoming so kind of like in love with pokemon i guess yeah or, um you know his father so he's just been reluctant and you know for tim to finally at the end of the movie be like no i'm going to stay with you for a while it's a nice little touching bit and you see that, you know, and Reynolds just does something really cool in that he allows himself to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. you know, in, in a way that it, it's not done in Deadpool in a way that's not been done before. And I thought, my God, it, it's done in a way to where it's vulnerable in that, you know, in that father way of, he doesn't know when he's going to see his child again. And yeah, now he gets that yeah. moment and it's perfect. He plays that like, and it's just one scene. It really is just only one scene. It's at the very end, but it is so when he's, when Tim turns around and says, no, I want to stay for a while. It's like that reaction is so like pure and just like, it, it, it's so great. And you just like, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that was a favorite moment of mine as well, and uh, you know, yeah, I would agree. I mean, there's t- shades of that in Deadpool too, but not to the uh, extent of Ryan's um, Ryan Reynolds' acting ability that you saw here. And that was, uh, yeah, it was a really lovely, touching scene. Like um, to these uh, <clears throat> this father and son reconnecting. Yeah, that was really well done. Really beautiful. Um, yeah. And yeah, who you know, who would have thought you would have seen that uh, that depth of acting in a Pokemon movie from Ryan Reynolds? 
Yeah. Um, the problem is I, I'm glad that people do like the movie, but I kind of found this to be a mess. Um, oh, like a mess in what sense? Like there's a lot going on and none of it really matters. Mm -hmm. Um, except for the whole father and son thing. Um, yeah, there is the cataclysmic, like Mewtwo is being held, is being kind of artificially created, much like Mewtwo was created in the first Pokemon movie. Right. Um, um, fun fact, it was supposed to be the, that's supposed to be the same Mewtwo. Ooh, nice. Yeah, because they're from the same region, so it's hinted at that. Sorry, I interrupted you, but. Uh, no. Really cool fact. No, that's great. Um, so I love the, so Mewtwo, um, um, so, you know, I, I understand like the cataclysmic event is important. Um, but even that's kind of, contr- kind of a kerfuffle because, um, because the movie tries to do like this whole, it tries to do the subverting of expectation thing. Right. Um, where it's like at the middle midpoint of the movie, Dave and I, Dave, oh God, Bill Nye, excuse me. Bill Nye, yeah. Um, he's like, you know, so here's the here's the plot of the movie. Here's what's happening. And I think my son is the bad guy. And my son, Milo Yiannopoulos, is the bad guy. Um, and and the way, like, it, if you watch that scene again, like, it's actually perfect. Like, like where the movie will go if they stayed on that trajectory is actually a really good thematic like point of the movie it's actually it's actually a really good like thread to go on and it's actually would have been even better than what they went with because the whole i the whole thing with tim is tim is a very reluctant person because Mm -hmm. of his father he's reluctant to become a pokemon trainer he's reluctant to even you know be in the same area as pikachu because of of his father and because of everything that's going to happen between their relationship. And because of that, you know, and, and to see that, you know, that it was po- probably going to mirror um, Bill Nighy's relationship with his son, Milo Yiannopoulos. I keep bringing that up. It's not Milo Yiannopoulos in the movie, but it looks so much like him. <laughs> looks and acts so much like him. A little bit. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, that it, that the whole idea idea is, you know, <laughs> the whole idea is, you know, it's a story of fathers trying to make the world better, but neglecting the people they love mm-hmm. in in the process. Or and and I feel like that's such an important like story beat, and that would have been an important message that could have carried through. And because in the, because in a way, you know, because in a way that, because in a way that could symbolize how, like, a future, like, a generation that grew up falling in love with Pokemon have now, like, kind of neglected, you know, the future generations. And now they could, you know, integrate together. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, you know, kind of like how the Lego movie is set up to be. But yeah. no, we get, but no, we get Bill Nye is just crazy and just wants ev- everyone to evolve into Pokemon. Right, yeah, that was kind of his uh, his philo- philosophy, I guess you could say. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah. wait, what? When did we? Wait, what? Wh- what? Now this is our new. <laughs> this is our new twist. Why? Why did we make all this? Why did we have this whole elaborate effort to have this whole re- recreation thing happen? This whole simulation happened mm-hmm. when you're just a bad guy all along. Yeah, it was a little, um, yeah, convoluted in his. Uh... I mean, this is some Emperor Palpatine shit. Right. Yeah, he was trying to get the uh, Pikachu back as well. Like, God, yeah, I'm trying to figure out his plot too. <laughs> um, 
he wanted Pikachu because Pikachu showed Mewtwo like the meaning of life, I think. Right. I guess he was trying to figure out he was trying to use them to find Mewtwo again, trying to uh use their uh, sort of uh detective uh, detective prowess, I suppose. Which Tim is not a detective. Yeah. And also Pikachu has you know has, you know, um is his memory wiped, so honestly, if you would have just left them alone, they would your evil plan would have just gone without a hitch. Right, yeah. Yeah, this whole thing just doesn't really work. No, not really. Um, and I know there's the whole, you know, you know, I, I think it was actually in your recent, in the Waffle Press's recent episode oh, of The Dark so. Knight. I don't, it was the recent retrospective where uh, Matt kind of Matt Garingo brought up the point of there's a difference between plot holes and plot contrivances, mm-hmm. and plot contrivances only matter how much you make them a big deal. And to me, I know I'm making a big deal of how Bill Nye's plan is so convoluted, but the problem is you can't get away from how the movie was setting up to be and then pulls the rug in a way that doesn't really match the characters. Right. And match what we were, what was happening through the progression of the movie. And I feel like a, the more interesting story is the story about how fathers have neglected their children or neglected the next generation, causing them to be kind of the enemies of the future. And, and now we have this evil mad scientist B plot, B movie plot, where Bill Nye wants to take over, wants to evolve humans the same way uh, the lizard in the Amazing Spider Man wanted to evolve everyone to lizards. <laughs> yeah, it's now that's never a good sign when you uh, compare things to the Amazing Spider Man, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and look, yeah. So, yeah, there's just. Yeah. Um, and, and that's kind of just where I kind of stand on the movie. Is that It's a movie where it wants to do the subverting of expectations, but the thing about subverting expectations is you kind of have to do a little bit more homework to do that. Right. Um, and you kind of have to do a little bit more work. You can't just, you know, be like, and now the plot is this now. <laughs> So. Exactly. Yeah, I would. You know, I would agree. Um, yeah, it was just. Uh, it was just very complicated in their. In their just. Excuse me. Their. Uh, just the uh, the way that some of it went is it was a little frustrating at times. Yeah. So. What else did you? Th- I've been blabbering on. What did? Yeah. You, what else did you think about the movie? Was there anything so, else? Any besides any uh, plot? Excuse me. Besides any plot, uh, plotiness. Yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The. Uh, um. Is it, excuse me. Uh, just Justice Smith and um, and Ryan Reynolds work together well, I would say. Um, the fact that you had a Pokemon movie that actually worked and was functional and just everything just... You know, for the most part, besides the detective, it wasn't that great of a detective story, but it was cool to see the uh, everything just kind of living in this living, breathing Pokemon world, how they would function. Um, kind of the world building I was very impressed by. Yeah. It's kind of funny. You bring that up. It's kind of funny how this is Detective Pikachu, but everyone but, everyone but Pikachu does a detectiving. <laughs> yeah that's uh it's like if you made a batman movie but everyone around batman solved the mystery but batman mm-hmm. 
Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it, I. I mean, here's the thing. I like that people enjoyed it. Um, I, I I'm happy that people are into it. I think the. And honestly, it is a lot better video game movie than some of the movies we've gotten. Like, I mean, I've chuckled more at this than other films. I mm-hmm. like, like there are some good moments. Yeah. I don't mind that this would become a, you know, a series or even like a cinematic universe where, or even like an anthology style cinematic universe. Sure. Yeah. That'd be uh I mean, I wouldn't mind that. I was more interested in, the uh, Pokemon, then some of the detective story, just the look and feel of that world. And, um, you know, the interest, like when they catch Pokemon, things like that, or training them. Yeah, I, would, w- I wouldn't mind if this, this uh, branches out into that, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, and, and yeah, and I think, I think my, and also, I just... I kind of hope in the future that maybe they don't bring Rob Letterman back. Okay. Um, I know you brought up that he does a really decent job, but I think the problem with the movie for me is the the direction you, and kind of for example, you brought up, you know, the chemistry between Reynolds and justice or Mm -hmm. Reynolds and Smith. um, But the, uh, but for me about, for me, while I agree on that, I agree on that chemistry is there. My problem is I don't think Rob Letterman constructs those scenes. I don't think he constructs the performance that Jaden needs to give. Or not oh, to, no, 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 uh, Justice. Justice. <sighs> okay, it's all right. Okay. Uh, I, keep, uh, I think that's the second time I've done that, Jaden. <laughs> no, it's all right. Sorry, uh, but um, but just i think for justice you know i think he does give a good performance but i if you watch a scene where pikachu and uh and tim are kind of sitting down and having that heart to heart i don't think that scene is kind of in terms of like shot choices i and and yes i get this is a nitpick Mm -hmm. this is a nitpick um but i Mm -hmm. don't agree with like how like shot composition and shot choices and how it cuts is can- yeah he's certainly but- he's certainly not the best at being a world class filmmaker and his decisions and visually how he tells the story like he's not you know Stanley Kubrick for sure oh, oh of course it's just and I'm not even asking for Kubrick or Fincher level I'm I'm not even asking for that. It's just you know, you is it it's I'm just saying like in your kind of shot construction, you're building a very emotional scene or building a funny scene and how you compose everything doesn't real it doesn't really match editorially with what we're feeling with the character because the whole idea of this movie is to kind of get everyone back into mm-hmm. an immersive feel of being you know in the pokemon world yeah and and to be fair like the cinema like how the movie looks and how it's designed is impressive Mm -hmm. um and that's a big thing i took away from is how cool everything looked the issue is you know is you're right like i don't think rob letterman is just quite there in back in immersing us into the world the way we kind of needed to Mm-hmm. But I mean, that's just my take. I know I nitpicking a kids movie, and maybe that's not <laughs> fair of me, right? Yeah, I don't know. Um, but then again, I remember seeing the Leia movie too, and that's still like one of my favorite movies of the year. Yeah, yeah. So, mm-hmm. hey, if Phil Lord and Christopher Miller can make, and 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 um, ooh, who. And the director of uh, Lego Movie Two can make an entertaining kids movie. Maybe you should take some notes. Um, I don't know. Yeah, um, you know, there's certainly a 
broader scope of the level level of caliber of how these movies are made now for kids um there's certain maturity and you know i don't think it descends into like just fart jokes or something oh yeah that's the good thing i'll say about pikachu is there are no fart jokes yeah um it, it all the humor is in a way organic i mean even i forget the duck's name i'm oh, psyduck psyduck like how that character is used in how like that whole gag is I mean I think that's probably the most interesting I think that's the best joke in the movie the best gag Oh yeah it's pretty damn clever I love that <laughs> Like and also it's really funny to you know to how they build it up is like and Pikachu is like okay what do we need to do to keep you relaxed so you don't blow up this car Give him a, give him a foot massage Yeah was, uh, I couldn't stop. Uh, that little bit kind of uh, kept me laughing for a little bit. Yeah, it, that's the funniest. That to me is the funniest bit of the movie is Psyduck and how he's like, he he can't communicate in English the way Pikachu does. Mm-mm. But the way he's portrayed is so well because you can tell when he's more stressed. You can tell like when, you know, he's more calm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, you know, it's very funny to see how they play that. And, and I think to the movie's credit, that is the best gag in the film. It's yeah. really nice to see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Psyduck. Yeah. Psyduck stand. <laughs> the was... Psyduck stand account. Yeah. You know, I'll let, you know what? I'll let you take that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, no, you could take it if you want. That's fine. I'm happy with the Youth Critic Chapter 3 Parabellum. Oh, yeah. It's coming out. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy with my little tie-in to Jump Chapter 3. Yeah. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I guess that'll be the Brightburn Critic. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's coming out as well. Yeah. Uh, or... Question for you. Go ahead. Did you have a favorite Pokemon? I mean, you're not really too much of a fan growing up. Did you have a favorite? <laughs> I, yeah, that's the thing. I wasn't that big of a fan. So I always will love Pikachu. Mm-hmm. I know that's the safest, the safe choice. Sure. But there's just something about, it's, it's basically, it's the same reason why I love Bumblebee in all those Transformers movies. Mm-hmm. Like Bumblebee just seems to have the most heart in humanity. Uh, Sorry. Something popped up. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I'll stick that from the top. Yeah, like, Pikachu, like, it's the same thing as those Transformers movies Mm -hmm. with Bumblebee, where I love Bumblebee because that character, no matter how bad the Transformers movies got, Bumblebee was always, like, the character with the most heart, the most humanity. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe for the exception of Age of Extinction, where he beats up a, a, a a new, like, Camaro. Um, but still, like, it's kind of like that. It's, I love the character, I love the characters that have, like, the most heart in humanity, and also, I, I have the scene of Pikachu, like, trying to bring Ash back to life from the, in, from the first. Oh, yeah, it's heartbreaking. heartbreaking. I have, I always have that, like, burned into my, like, psyche, because it is so, like, even how it's, like, animated, it's so heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. How like alone Pikachu feels in, in his sadness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's that's that's why I love that scene so much. It, you just feel, you just feel like, yeah, that and that's my favorite moment in all of Pikachu is that scene. Yeah, it leads to something really stupid, but still, it's like how that is executed a Pikachu just screaming while bringing Ash to life. Like it, that if that doesn't break your heart, I don't know what does. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's Pikachu. I'll just say that it's Pikachu. What about your, yours? Growing up, it was Blastoids. I really enjoyed just the uh, 
It's his design, giant turtle that shoots. He's like very gamma esque. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Damn it. Sorry, my friend. All these cameos. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so Blastoids, just very gamma like. And um, right now, um, I was really fond of. Uh, I was really fond of. Uh, Psyd- <laughs> I like Psyduck. I like Pikachu. Um, Mr. Mime is just so, it's just so stupid. <laughs> but it it is a stupid joke, but you know yeah. they put, they left it in there because it was it made everyone laugh in the test screens. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I would say those three right now: Pikachu, um, Pikachu, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mime, and Psyduck. Yeah. Yeah, I, I even I I do like the Mr. Mime. It's just that's kind of it's just again it's a movie where it seems like everyone is even Justice is character is like the only one like who can figure out like how to you know get Mr. Mime to talk mm-hmm. without talking and it's a brilliant scene like it's a brilliantly written scene of how you get like someone who doesn't want to talk to talk and how to intimidate them yeah out you know like you, so in a way you're playing their own game mm-hmm. and yeah it's a brilliant constructed scene um yeah. and yeah and even the ending is kind of funny because but it has no resolution because so did mr mime get burned alive or uh, yeah i think that was um that was what it, that was what was implied <laughs> Pretty much. So is Mr. Mime just fake burning alive? Yeah, pretty much. And he's just going to fake burning alive for yeah. the rest of eternity? Yeah, exactly. Oh, my. Oh, <laughs> oh. A little dark. But I love that joke. It is funny how mm. they accidentally like forget that they're holding the match and he just... Ah! Or ah, no, as I'm doing, brilliant. but uh, yeah, it was. I I think it was a, you know, at times it was really fun. It's certainly not the, uh, it's certainly not the Dark Knight or something. But I would show it to like my little cousins, little, uh, you know, friend, my friend's son or something like that. I would, you know, put it on for them. It was yeah, cute. yeah, it's cute, and you know, there's a lot, and of course, I mean. There's a lot of... It could have been worse, is what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you bring up the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer, but... <laughs> and look, we haven't seen the movie. They could pull out a miracle. Sure. Um, But still, no one really liked that trailer. No. I think... I, 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 the creator of Sonic didn't, didn't like it either, so... Yeah, I think I'm the only person that was like, it's fine. I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, excuse me. It's fine. Who cares? It's making me, it's making me bored just thinking about it. Oh, no. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, um, do we have any more to say on Pikachu? Um, No, not really. I mean, the... Uh... uh I just thought it was just fun. It was a fun movie that turning my brain off, not thinking too critically about it, I really enjoyed. Yeah. I And I'll have... And there will be more to say on it later. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I just what... Yeah, I just wasn't... I just wasn't into it. Um, but hey... You know, we're getting John Wick Chapter 3 next week. Um, we're going to probably all, even though we're, we're going to be reluctant about it, we're probably all going to see Aladdin. Yeah. Um, you know, we're all going to see it. Who? And then, you know, of course, and then we'll end May with Godzilla. Oh, so, God, yes. Very so exciting. we're going to be fine. Yeah. yeah, I think we'll be great. Yeah, we, actually, yeah, we'll be great. Mm-hmm. You know? But, yeah, I'll hopefully cover more of those with you as well, dude. Yeah, like we will definitely, 
yeah, we're definitely going to talk about those. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, okay, we'll probably talk about some other movies. If no, if no one wants to talk about Aladdin, we'll talk about Brightburn or Booksmart. That's yeah, what we'll talk, do. Talk about it again. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So with that, um, with that, Gene, um, where can don't you have like a podcast that you do? Yes, yes, I do. It's called the Waffle Press Podcast. You could find it on iTunes, uh, YouTube. Subscribe to that. We're on Twitter um at the waffle press hopefully we'll be on instagram fairly soon and um right now we're in the middle of a bat the batman or batman retrospective and that one's been really fun and people have been responding well to that so i hope you check it out on all our platforms and you can follow me personally on g9892 as well awesome yeah i've really been loving as a batman fan i'm really loving uh the retrospectives as well as uh, all the content you guys make. Um, it, yeah, it's... Please go over to the Waffle Press. They are... They, they are... They're real, They're the real ones. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate your uh, watching our podcast. I'm glad to uh, podcast with you too, dude. Yeah. Uh, and I will have a link um, in the description of this podcast to it, of course. Uh, and then, uh, yeah... So stay tuned. I'm gonna have some more people come on, come on for Pokemon, because I have kind of a, I have just different people in rotation, mm-hmm. or really maybe one more person. But so just stay tuned, everyone. Uh, we'll be back just very soon. Thank you. Um, thanks, Gene, so much. This was great, and we will definitely have you on at least for. We'll have you on for something. Okay. We'll figure um, it out. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely figure this out. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Thanks, Gene. And here we go. Ah, my clues. What is all this? Harry is still alive. Case closed, but still open until I solve it. All right. Here it is. Harry faked his own death. Or somebody else faked Harry's death. Harry faked somebody else's death. That last one doesn't work at no. all. Hello. Welcome back to the Youth Critic Podcast. Um, joining me is David we- uh, Weiser. Yes. <laughs> I always wonder if I'm getting that right. <laughs> no, you, you said it correct. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> and we're back. We're talking uh, Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Um or is it Pokemon colon Detective Pikachu? Uh, yeah, but I don't know if you say the colon. <laughs> okay, just checking. Just checking. Uh, just checking proper. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, um, David, start just going quickly. Uh, what was your history with Pokemon for you? So, around when I was like seven maybe six or seven that's when i got into pokemon and it literally started like wasn't even like before i like wasn't interested in it but then like there was one like literally the one pokemon that got me into it that has been my favorite pokemon ever since is uh mudkip like uh i saw mudkip and i was like oh that's really cool or whatever and then like i ended up getting into the anime and the video games and just kind of from there like I, I watched and played a lot and then I was like, oh, wow, this is really neat. And then I kept playing the games and all that. And I have been kind of on and off of it. I uh, haven't really played a lot of the more recent stuff or watched the anime in several years. But uh, growing up, it was one of the franchises I was into, I guess. Right. So for me, I was ripe uh, for Pokemon because Pokemon came out in like the mid to late nineties. So, Mm -hmm. and of course, like, so I was ripe for that age group that they were targeting, um, or maybe like the tail end of it. Um, Mm -hmm. but the problem for me was I had very strict religious parents. 
-hmm. And for whatever reason, they thought, or someone made this big deal that Pokemon was like the devil incarnate or something, or demonic or something. Yeah, I've I've heard about that. (laughs) Yeah, and I I still, maybe I should have done some more research before doing this, Uh, but but still, like, you know, was that I never got, like, to really play with Pokemon or, you know, do any trading cards. My cousins were totally into it, but I never, like, I just never got to even play Pokemon. I barely, I only got to watch the show in movies through my cousins, and that was pretty much it. So my kind of knowledge of Pokemon always was limited to that be- for those reasons. And also, I think my parents they were using religious religious reasons as a reason, but I was thinking they just didn't want to buy like a shit ton of cards and toys and games. Yeah, there definitely is a lot of merchandise associated with it, so. <laughs> yeah, because I think that's the reason why they delayed my nerd. They intentionally n- delayed my nerdum so much because they knew it would cost a fortune. Mm-hmm. Um, so... <laughs> So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I just... So, yeah, Pokemon was just another, like, victim of... Yeah, I, w- I heard of it, but I never got to play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, s- story, so... But, yeah. Um, so, and really, I kind of had just forgotten about it over time. Like, I was like, yeah, I I've heard, remember Pokemon, but, you know, i just forgotten over it. And then Pokemon Go comes out and becomes this, like, cultural phenomenon where I see everyone like in the streets, everyone like people were literally walking around malls trying to find Pokemon. Yeah. I I remember when uh, Pokemon go launched, I had the app for maybe like a month or so. And then I kind of just, it kind of got old. And so I ended up deleting the app and some of my friends still play it, but (laughs) yeah, I never got the app, but I mean, I would just like, I mean, I would be driving with a friend to like a movie or something. They would be like, turn right here for or get in this lane real quick while they're playing the app. And I'd be like trying to hurry over <laughs> to, you know, pick up the Pokemon. Mm. And so, yeah, it's um, so, yeah, Pokemon's just been in and out of my life. And now we have a Pokemon movie finally even though it's not a like straight up Pokemon movie, it's a Pokemon Detective Pikachu. Yes. Yes. So, David, before I unload, why don't you go ahead and you know give some thoughts? So, I liked it for what it was. I, I, there were there were certain aspects of it. Like, I really loved the world, like the world building, and kind of just like the general world, like the people co-inhabiting with Pokemon and like kind of that setup and like the Pokemon looked incredible. Like the visual effects were really good. Um, and then I really loved, uh, I, I just really adored Ryan Reynolds as detective Pikachu. Like he brought so much to the movie that I'm not sure it would have worked without him. And I feel uh, if and more of the nitpicky side, I guess like good things that I felt could have been better or um, could have been further developed with the story was pretty generic kind of went through the beats of uh, like detective noir type stuff. And so like it all like it's pretty predictable for the most part. And then there's like these crazy twists at the end that are like that you kind of see them coming, but then you're kind of like, is this really happening? (laughs) You know, Uh, we'll get into that when we get into the spoilers, I guess. But uh, those are just kind of my general impressions. I I really enjoyed it, and as a fan of Pokemon, I was satisfied. I think for me, you can watch this movie as a Pokemon fan and be happy, and, and I think you can be happy to an extent. Like I think it is really cool to watch all this on the big screen. Watch, you know, all these you know monsters and character. I shouldn't say monsters, just like all these like characters you grew up watching in the show and playing with the video games and doing the Pokemon go app. And I think it's, I think it's really cool that you get to see all that for the first time ever. But I think the problem 
with Pokemon, for, or, or at least Detective Pikachu for me, is that it's stuck in a movie where I think there's a great movie in Detective Pikachu, but the movie doesn't seem that interested in the greater story. And I think it's a shame that that's the problem. Or I think that's the, the greater shame is that there's a great story about fathers ne neglecting not necessarily their sons, but the next generation uh, of like Pokemon trainers and them. And then those, you know, that next generation becomes resentful of those, you know, of their parents or of the past generations because they were neglected or they felt like they were less important, you know, to the, in the grander scope of things. And I think there's a greater story there, but it's stuck in a movie where we're trying to have all these Pokemon references, all of the, just every, it's stuck in a movie where there's just too much going on and it's all over the place. And then it ends in the most nonsensical way imaginable or the, the climax is nonsensical. Yeah. I'd, I'd say it actually didn't have that many references. And if the references were that were there seemed kind of tastefully incorporated in my opinion, um, it didn't feel like beating you over the head with fan service. Maybe like if you're referring to just like the general Pokemon being on screen, I don't I don't know if I'd, I mean, you kind of need that for the world. So that I, w I wouldn't say that's too hard, uh, too much fan service, you know? Right. Well, I think for me, it's more of, I think there's too many plot. Th Maybe I should clarify. There's too many. Th it's not necessarily the references. It's the plot threads. Yeah, yeah. That's going on. Like they're like the a plot is Tim coming to uh, what's the city called? Mo City. More. Um, trying to remember. It's to We'll just call it Tokyo. <laughs> okay. Sure. I don't know. I don't know what else. To, sorry. It's uh. It's like London meets Tokyo. Um. Let me look it up really quick. Okay, but it's um. But yeah, it's this. We have the story of him or Tim coming, you know, to basically confirm that his father was killed, um, uh, and kind of coming to see the old place, rummaging through, you know, kind of being, you know, re basically reluctant hero. And then we have, uh, Catherine uh, Lipton, I think that's the we have her character um trying to be a reporter we have bill nighy who is like i want to i think we i think we in pokemon and humans can co bond together and co like and learn how to be a better society as we you know bond with our characters then you have milo yiannopoulos <laughs> um <clears throat> basically being generically evil till the end um and then uh and then you have the fought you know everything that was happening behind the scenes with the dad and pikachu and it's just and then and then you and then underneath all that there's a great father and son story mm -hmm. and it's like oh well why didn't we just do the father and son story and just like cut like two or three of these plot lines out because none of it really, or or maybe like switch ever, th things around. Because it feels like the plot that should have been the most, um, the most like emotional, the most like the the thing that grounds the story, the the world, got like sidestepped. Um, for like it got sidestepped for all this other stuff that, in the end, didn't really contribute much to the plot or felt like you know it felt like it was all building to you know trying to subvert expectations because they're because that because that also happens here and i will say this like i don't mind expectations being subverted as long as it's like very well crafted and built up but the way they subvert expectations in the third act is like wait how did where how did we get here now mm -hmm. it, it like everything involving mewtwo 
um, and how that all and Mewtwo incorporates in the ending. It's so convoluted that you can't imagine anyone would put this much thought into their evil plan to use Mewtwo. You want to go into spoilers <laughs> so we can just uh, address that more in depth, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you have any more non-spoiler thoughts? Uh, I kind of summed up everything. I, I looked it up. It's Rhyme City is the name of the Rhyme City. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we can go into spoilers. Okay, so the whole like Mewtwo like bringing people into like putting people into the Pokemon that is not a thing in any of the comics or, or any of the video games or the anime or anything like that. So I have no idea where that came from, <laughs> but that was an interesting uh, development. It's kind of it's... like what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I understand that Mewtwo is kind of like it's kind of like, like the. Go ahead. He's he's like one of the most powerful Pokemon in a sense. Like as a he's one of the most powerful legendary Pokemon. Is like the idea of is like he's a man he's a man made Pokemon based off the DNA of the very first Pokemon, and so that makes him very powerful, pretty much. Okay. So, so yeah, so yeah, uh, Bill Nighy, uh, Captain Davy Jones. Uh, like he want he wants to like he wants to put everyone into <laughs> he wants to put everyone into Pokemon because he thinks we will evolve better if we are Pokemon. Yeah, I mean that that was one part of it that didn't really fully add up to me. Like I'm like, okay, so what is what is your goal here? <laughs> you know, like I don't fully understand his motivations. I felt like he was just kind of generic corporate bad guy. You know. That was the that's what I took away. From. That was one of the weaker, really way weaker parts of the film. Well, it's like the generic corporate bad guy was also like the mad scientist. Yeah, the, like the crazy wacky mad scientist. It's like, it's like the villain of Halloween three, but less interesting. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, and it comes and the, the subversion comes at a great cost because you're presented this much better scenario where, and I, and I know the character's name is not Milo Yiannopoulos. I know it just, he looks so similar to Milo Yiannopoulos that you can't not think like, you just can't like not get away from it. You almost wonder if the movie is somehow commenting on Yiannopoulos at all by having him look and sound like Yiannopoulos. So anyway, um, uh, so wait, where were we? Evil mad scientist corporate guy? Is that where we yeah. were at? Okay. Y you get this aversion early on that, you know, it's ultimately going to be the sun's going to be the bad guy. And you kind of get the theme kind of spelled out for you um, at that point. But it's still like, you know, you know what? That's a great idea. That's a great idea for a Pokemon movie. Have like someone from a future generation just be totally angry that, you know, that a, an entire generation of people like just fell in love with these Pokemon. And then the future generation just totally get, you know, like they feel sideswiped and they feel like, I don't know, like that sounds like the better idea. And then ultimately it's a reluctant hero that has to realize like no, you don't have to. We don't have to punish the Pokemon or or other generations to for you know for being so neglectful. Like they're great for what they are, and I think. But then we get you know evil mad scientists, and it doesn't have anything to do with anything that's going on. It's just another plot thread. Mm -hmm. Um. But anyway, that's the one thing I'm hung up on. Is there anything else like you're either hung up on or want to talk about? I mean, really that. And then there was one thing that like didn't really go anywhere. Like the giant Torterra thing. Like they're, they're like, we're making these giant Pokemon and you never really find out why. Or like, like they just kind of have it for that set piece of them falling off that cliff, which is actually a po giant Pokemon, which is the giant Torterra. 
and there's not really any significance for it beyond that so it's kind of like one of those weird things it's like okay so why is this why is this included you know it, it felt like a like when they're going through that the laboratory and they find out all these like they're doing all these experiments and stuff it's like okay so I, I understand for these other ones they're like trying to control these Pokemon or whatever and then they're making Mewtwo but like why are they making giant Pokemon <laughs> Well, it makes sense if we were following the original plot thread uh, or the plot thread that was like, I guess, a diversion. Like if uh, if we were following that, it would have it would have been a great idea to have like, oh, like we're seeing like that they've made progress in science and in mutating all these mutants to be more dangerous or mutating all these Pokemon to be more dangerous and to have a, a more cataclysmic effect on the world. Yeah, it was just like with that, with with particular the giant Pokemon, that that specific detail didn't go anywhere. The the like mutating them and making them stronger did like have something to do with the rest of it. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. It, yeah. It, it does. Yeah, it really is just an expensive set piece just to have another action scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we. It, I mean, there's a great joke recently that, you know, that you only have that set piece in there just so Pikachu can get hit with a pebble and then almost be, you know, dead. Yeah. <laughs> Which, really, Pikachu, you're you're tapped out after a pebble? Well, I mean, he is, uh, if, you, if you're going by the type, like, matchups, uh, he's technically weak to, like, ground and stuff, so. <laughs> oh, okay. Good to, good to know. So in a way, it makes sense. It's just the way it happened. It was just kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, Pikachu's just tapped out. Or yeah. the this character we're falling in love with and care about, like, gets tapped out, like you know, by a pebble. How funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, how okay. And then, um, yeah, it's just everything with the revelation about it is not. And even like the revelation that Pikachu has when he's at the bridge again and realizes, oh, I have, you know, Ryan Reynolds inside of me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I actually guessed that from the trailer because <laughs> I was like, huh, this guy goes missing and then suddenly this Pikachu can talk. I feel like there's a connection there and somehow the guy, I thought the guy turned into the Pikachu. I didn't know it was going to be like a morph like i didn't know pikachu was gonna be already like there like i thought that he like got turned because there's these pokemon there's a series of pokemon games called mystery dungeon where a human gets turned into a pokemon and but it's like hypothetically as if the humans in the pokemon lived in separate societies so this human gets turned into a pokemon has loses his memory and he's like living with these po- he he like gets sent to this world of pokemon and then becomes like he goes through these mystery dungeon thing and like like gets a partner and they become friends and there's like this like whole society of just pokemon and then you find out he's a human at the end and so like i thought it was going to be something kind of like that but it was different cuz it was like mewtwo like putting the humans inside the pokemon and not just a human turning into a Pokemon like that series of games. You know what, David? I think you just sound you just described a much better movie. Yeah, well, the the those game that the plot of that game is a lot more, um, I guess, emotionally developed and like there's more of a core there. I don't I don't know. So like, I think the thing here is that they're they were ad- adapting this off of a specific game detect like there's a detective pikachu game that came out a few years ago i've never played it so i don't know how much they kept intact and how much they adjusted for the big screen and whatnot but uh it it, it did it did feel like they were kind of stuck into whatever that plot entailed yeah and i don't know much about the game either so i can't help you too yeah. much <laughs> <laughs> um that's that could be a possibility but even then it's like it, it david what you just described to me is that they really tried super hard to subvert a lot of expectations but 
what I mean by trying hard is they really just stretched everything so thin that when you start to think about it, your brain hurts. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, I don't expect a um, a very how do I say this? Like, like when I go to a, if I'm going to a Pokemon movie, I'm not expecting um, like very like developed polished story per se like i'm not because the most of the games in the like the move like the anime and stuff like that like the plots are also pretty paper thin right i I, and that is a good point that is a fair point I, i maybe i'm asking too much of movies (laughs) um especially after i don't know like i feel like there's i feel like we've kind of reached the point where especially now that we have like a lego movie and actually two or three lego movies where they emote they are like polished scripts or they and they are like like they're like the stories are much better than what they deserve to be and Mm. And maybe we've been spoiled. Maybe in a way we've been spoiled too much by that. But still, it's yeah. like. But still, you know, it's like you know. But here, it. I think if it was just a paper thin plot and it was just plain, and it was just you know one story that they were focusing on, and even if it was just one story where it was like there's a Pikachu and he has a partner and they're both and they're both like solving crimes like a pg rated shane black movie Mm -hmm. like that could have been you know that could have been okay like you know i could be okay with that like a pg like noir detective story like tin tin yeah like if we got that like that could work very well just like a streamlined detective story where pikachu is this thing but i think because we have different things going on in the story and the things are connected. And there's even a much more better idea within the movie. I think that kind of, I think that kind of sours it a little bit. I think that to me, I think, you know, I think, and also I think it doesn't help that, you know, we just, I think it just doesn't help that we've had a little better. And now, and now we're like, why can't you know ever why can't why can't like you know like the pokemon movies and the emoji movies like learn from what you know lego did like keep a story like centered and you can have different things going on but it all kind of has to you know feed into a very character driven plot but but then again you're right it's a kid's movie yeah um for me the entertainment value of it and like the production value and like the technical aspect aspects really kind of outweighed the like narrative shortcomings. So I was kind of able to forgive a lot of those things for me. Right. And I'm, and to me, that's like the most impressive thing about Pikachu is how well the, the world is designed. Like it is like, it is kind of like, if you look, like if you pay attention close enough, certain scenes do look like the backdrop of ready player one, Mm -hmm. but still it's like, it's very well immaculately designed. And I I love that. It didn't look like just like our normal world. Like they kind of gave it like that blade runner, like kind of uh, that, you know, like that, that like kind of blade runner vibe with like the, uh, like it's kind of pseudo futuristic, but, not but it also feels kind of heightened and uh i guess japanese like it it, it feels like it came straight out of the anime or the video game or like like i felt like it really felt like the world of pokemon it felt like to me a live action anime like or a live action yeah like it just it like it even looks very similar to i know it's not a great movie but it looks very similar to ghost in the shell Mm-hmm. And you know, and I think, and I think that 
really does and i think ghost in the shell like it's not that great of a story but it does capture the look very well yeah it's a very similar aesthetic yeah it's it's really yeah and that is the most and that is impressive i mean pikachu looks incredible and he looks super furry and looks super like he and he moves very like diligently it's not like it's not weird and he doesn't look weird when he opens his mouth yeah they didn't all. they didn't go like i love that they kind of balanced the like photorealism and the cartoonish nature of the pokemon like they didn't go full cartoonish but there's like a degree so it's like it looks real but it also like you can tell it's cgi but it I don't know. Like I felt like they struck a really nice balance with the design of most of the Pokemon. So it's like you can, you, they're these otherworldly creatures, like so they don't, but they don't look like realistic to like a freaky degree. Like if you saw, like legitimately a rat look, uh, like a yellow mouse, like what it what it would look like in our world. Like if you just painted a mouse yellow and gave it red cheeks, like that would look a little freaky. <laughs> so like right i feel like they did they they struck a nice balance there yeah i yeah and i yeah i think and i think they did i think they did and i think you know you brought up ryan reynolds who i think does give a really good performance it is at times like a pg deadpool but i think because reynolds is so charismatic that it charms you know it charms you the whole way through mm -hmm. and also reynolds gives i think a really nice performance as the dad at the very end like i know he only has one scene mm -hmm. but that one scene with uh tim and his father works so well like it's so well done because you know that but you know that reynolds's character wants his son to stay and Tim is still like he wants to go back, but really he wants to give his father what he wants, which is, you know, the, the father and son bond that they never had. And when Tim does turn around and say, I, you know, can I stay more? You know, Reynolds character gives that subtle, like, you know, like, yes, I want you to stay. Mm -hmm. And it's great. And it's a great little, like, tibet that i just really like it's very sub subtle and it just makes the end of the movie just all the more like it just makes the ending of the movie perfect which is probably like my favorite scene in the movie is that very end yes uh i'm, I'm very curious to see what a sequel would be like if they would find some convoluted way to make ryan reynolds detective pikachu again because that worked so well if they would try to force that to replicate that like dynamic again, or if they would leave it as it is now, now that it ended with Detective Pikachu just being a normal Pikachu and Ryan Reynolds just being Ryan and Re Ryan Reynolds, basically. I'm very curious to see if they if they do make a sequel, what they how they handle that. <laughs> Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if in the sequel we somehow learn that Ryan Reynolds was Ash the whole time. Oh, uh, no, I feel like if they uh, they they specifically I think they named him like they so they gave him a name so, and, and it wasn't Ash. So and then they I, I read that uh, the Pokemon company and uh, the director like Rob Letterman, I believe that's his name. Yes. Um. They specifically did not want to tell a story about Ash or Red. Like they wanted to tell a story about new characters. And so if they brought them in, I think I've, I've read that they're looking to potentially do spinoffs like uh, um, one of the, the 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 first main game series. The first game in the main series uh, was Red. And, well, two games, uh, Red and Blue. I was I, I saw that they were looking to possibly adapt that in this world. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. Going back to the kind of the sequel idea, um, because I really don't know what to say about those games. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, it could. No, I don't think they would. I mean, it would be very convoluted to be like, "Hey, Ryan Reynolds, we need it," or "Hey, we need you to go back to being Pikachu because to solve this mystery." Mm-hmm. You know, we have this world crisis we have to solve, but we need you to be Pikachu again. We need to go see Mewtwo again. We need it. I think it'd just be too. I think it'd be just too crazy. And on top of that, it, I think Pika, the world of Pokemon is so vast and huge. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to do different kinds of stories or a different, yeah. yeah, much like, you know, adapt, maybe basically, basically creating a cinematic universe. Like, you know, like, yeah, we'll probably come back to these characters down the line, but let's do, you know, let's do different kinds of stories mm-hmm. before we do a sequel, much like what legendary has recently done with Kong and Godzilla. Like they did a whole King Kong movie before doing Godzilla too. Yeah. Um, that will basically set up the Kong versus Godzilla mm-hmm. movie coming out next spring. So yeah, I think, I think, you know, I mean, and also the movie technically wasn't, I mean, it's, it's doing very, very well. Like it did $170 million last weekend worldwide. Yeah, Basically, that sounds accurate. So it did very well, but I don't know if it was successful enough to be like, now we got to change our plans to include these characters in any of our sequels. Mm-hmm. In the way, like in the way that fantastic beast was, permanently affected by yeah yeah. um so yeah i don't know if it will happen um if it does if they do another one maybe get different directors oh yeah the uh, that i think that would also be good but yeah i i mean i'm i am totally game for a spinoff sequel whatever they want to do um more stories in this universe i'm i'm open to it (laughs) yeah yeah, I I'm open to it. Um, but yeah, def. But for me, it would have to be definitely you know, like let's see what other directors do with it. Um, and and the reason why I'm kind of singling out the director is because I don't I don't think Rob Letterman, and this will and and this will be kind of the final note. I don't know if Rob Letterman really does understand like the '90s material he's adapting as mm-hmm. well as he thinks. Um, like he understands the character. I think he understands the premise of all of these properties. Like he, like Goosebumps is, it's a goofy Twilight Zone for kids. And that just so happens to have creepy monsters. Um, but the thing is, Goosebumps is actually, you know, it's, it's, it's intimidating for children. And but his Goosebumps movie doesn't like it wouldn't scare a fly away. From mm-hmm. it wouldn't like that's <coughs> like that's the level of like like that's what the level we're working at with in that his Goosebumps movie, and then Pokemon has, and then Pokemon um has this problem of you know of you know like what you mentioned with Mewtwo like Mewtwo never has done anything that he that that character has done in any sort of movie before and now he's like and now that character is you know combining humans and Pokemon together Mm -hmm. so it's like you know and also Pokemon is Pokemon and Goosebumps are both very kid centric but both prop but both films have like young adults as elites Mm -hmm. so it's like come on let's get (laughs) like you know and i know it's all nitpicky and i know it's a contrivance um to an extent but it's one of those things where it's like but that's how you kind of keep the franchise going is by kind of respecting what has come before like even something that you know does even something like Last Jedi, 
that gets accused of being, you know, spinning in the face of the Force and everything Star Wars is, it still does fit into the mold of a Star Wars movie. It still fits into what Star Wars was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So I feel... I, I feel a little bit as a fan of... So I do feel a little bit of a fan thing that, you know, maybe we sh maybe we should have, you know, thought these things through because I feel like now these, you know, kid-centric movies are now YA franchises. Which, I get it, it's, it's, it's cheaper to have an 18-year-old or a 20-something play teenagers in a teenage movie. I get it, but still it's like, come on, really? Mm-hmm. You know, it's kid centric, and these are technically also supposed to be kid movies as well. So, oh, I guess not every movie can be the kid who would be king. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's and I think that's my last little hill I'm gonna die on for this podcast. Alrighty. <laughs> yeah, and I'm tired, so I yeah. think you are as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, so is there any more to say on Pikachu? I feel like kind of covered all the things I would talk about. <laughs> all right, awesome. Well, with that, um, David, where can the good people find you? And don't you run a film blog? Yes, so uh, you can find me on various social media, uh, the wiser underscore David, and then I... Uh, I do. I, I write film reviews on a blog called Film Assessment, and you can find it uh, on under that under that uh, handle for social media as well. Awesome, and awesome. Please check it out. It's a really good blog. Please check it out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Movie Kale, and then you can also follow the show at the Youth Critic, and then you can also. Follow the channel that distributes this podcast at KHC Network. We will be back um, next week with John Wick, Chapter 3, Parabellum, the final chapter, the last Keanu Reeves movie, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think I'm, yeah. We'll be back with John Wick. Uh, thanks, David, for joining us, and uh, we will talk to you very soon. All righty. I've dealt with this putz before, so I'll just do it again. Hey, bud, what are you doing? I can't do it when people are watching. Get me the hell out of here! Pika, pika! That's a twist. That's very twisty. Get him! He's barely moving. Don't tell him that. Oh, he's on a bike. Quick, get in front of him. Stop. Oh, no. He's going down hard, Tim. Should have worn a helmet.